guys, it's Kira and welcome to another very, very exciting 24 hour readathon vlog. Today is the day of the Rory Gilmore 24 hour readathon and I am so, so excited about it. This is a readathon that I'm hosting alongside my friend Carolyn from the channel Carolyn Marie Reads. Carolyn is one of my closest friends and she is absolutely wonderful. I will link her channel down below so you can go and check her out but she makes the most incredibly cosy bookish content and I absolutely love it and I'm sure that you will too. Carolyn, just like me, is a big reader and definitely likes to talk about books significantly more than the average person which is perfect for me because I do too and she's also someone who, just like me, is a big big fan fan of Gilmore Girls. So essentially we are just like a friendship match made in heaven because we have so many of the same interests and it's probably no surprise to any of you that given that we're both readers and lovers of Gilmore Girls that Rory Gilmore is one of our favourite TV characters ever. Rory is probably the most well-read television character to ever exist and I think she is definitely something of a goal for every single reader out there because she just is literally what everyone aspires to be, or at least what I aspire to be. And as much as I would absolutely love to transport myself into the world of Stars Hollow in order to live Rory's life, I just don't think that technology exists yet. So the next best thing is what Carolyn and I have come up with here and that is to spend a day injecting our everyday lives with a little bit more Stars Hollow magic and trying to be a little bit more like Rory. And of course one great way to be a little bit more like Rory is by reading some of the books that she read in Gilmore Girls. Carolyn and I have done a readathon like this together once before. Earlier this summer we both just decided that because we love Gilmore Girls and reading so much it would be really fun to just film reading vlogs where we spent the day doing Gilmore Girlsy things, watching and Gilmore Girls, we Skyped each other, read a lot of books and just had a really really great time doing it and we both got such a good reception from our vlogs and had such a fun time that we just knew that we had to do this readathon again, only this time we actually planned it in advance and have opened it up to absolutely anyone else who is also a fan of reading and Gilmore Girls. And the next 24 hours are all about just everyone who loves Gilmore Girls and books coming together and trying to read as much as possible and just make ourselves that little bit more like Rory. So we're basically just going to be reading books from the Rory Gilmore reading list and Carolyn and I also decided that it would be fun to create some other challenges. So we came up with this bingo board, which is essentially just nine challenges, all to do with Gilmore girls -y things. Some of them are bookish and other ones are a little bit more fun, like drinking lots of coffee and making Luke Steiner related food. And so I'm going to be trying to read as many books as possible over the next 24 hours, as well as trying to, fingers crossed, tick off all of these challenges as well. So it's gonna be such a fun day and I absolutely cannot wait. So it's currently mid-afternoon on Friday the 28th of August. The official timings for this readathon are as soon as it turns midnight and becomes Saturday the 29th of August, all the way until midnight that following day when it turns to Sunday the 30th. So it's essentially just a full 24 hour period to become as much like Rory as possible. However, we have also said that this can be completely flexible. We're all surrounding the day on Saturday the 29th of August, but you can make it really flexible and of course work it to your own time zone. And I'm actually gonna be a little bit flexible with it myself because I actually teach two yoga classes very early on Sunday mornings. And for that reason, I don't think it's very sensible to do a midnight to midnight readathon because then I won't get very much sleep and probably won't be a very functional yoga teacher. So like I said, it's mid-afternoon on Friday the 28th of August and so I'm definitely going to be starting my readathon later on today. I'm not going to be waiting until midnight but I'm thinking I might start it at about 8 or 9pm on Friday the 28th and then just go to that same time on Saturday the 29th. But I'll of course keep you updated with what time I pick but essentially it's all about just having that 24 hours to read along with everyone else and just be Rory-like. <laughs> Now, like I said, I'm not actually starting my readathon yet. However, I was doing a little bit of Gilmore Girls-y research this morning and trying to find some Luke's Diner related recipes. And I came across this Buzzfeed quiz, which is your Luke's Diner order will determine if you're more like Lorelai, Rory, or Emily Gilmore. And I thought that it would be really fun to start off this readathon vlog with doing this quiz, because like I said, I obviously want to be like Rory, but the quiz will tell us if that's actually true and I thought it'd be really fun. So, pick a waiter to serve you. Luke, Jess, Lane or Kirk? Got to be Jess, 100%. Order some breakfast. Pancakes, breakfast burrito, French toast or just coffee? Pancakes or French toast? Pancakes or French toast? Gotta be pancakes, I think. Order some lunch. 
burger and fries, BLT, grilled cheese or chicken strips. Definitely grilled cheese. Just to clarify, I'm imagining that all of these foods are vegan versions and I love a vegan grilled cheese. How about a drink? Soda, lemonade, milkshake or more coffee? I'd probably go for coffee here. Order something different from the menu. Pasta, salmon, that looks way too healthy. Bacon cheeseburger or pizza? Pizza for sure. Order something from the specials menu. Four sliced French toast. Soup of the day, special omelette, chicken pot pie. Ooh, let's go with four sliced French toast because then I get the pancakes and the French toast. Perfect. Don't forget some dessert. Cake, apple pie, cheesecake, or ice cream sundae, apple pie. And then finally, how would you rate your experience on Yelp? Five stars. Yes, I am more like Rory. Woohoo! I knew it. I'm a Rory Gilmore at heart. What can I say? So without further ado, welcome to a very, very fun vlog, which is going to be all about that Stars Hollow magic and just being a little bit more like Rory. I'll be catching up with you later on, probably with a cup of coffee and the official start of my readathon. But because it's now coming towards September and it's no longer the middle of summertime, daylight hours are already dwindling. So I wanted to start my readathon this afternoon just so that you would be able to see me in good lighting, but I'm not actually going to be starting reading until later. So I'll catch up with you a little bit later on. Okay, Gilmore gang. <laughs> That's such a nerdy thing to say. <laughs> It is now half past eight. I am prepped with a cup of coffee. This is my first mug of coffee that I'm having in this delightful Luke's Diner mug. It arrived literally two days ago. I ordered this mug weeks and weeks ago, but it came from Texas, I believe is where it shipped from. And just because of international shipping and also the fact that I think shipping is still slightly slower because of the pandemic, it literally arrived in the nick of time, but I thought that today would be the perfect time to give it a try. And it is delightful. This is just a delicious cup of coffee. I don't make coffee that often, but this one is a vanilla flavoured coffee with a little bit of sugar that I added and also I frothed up some oat milk with maple syrup and it is the most delightful cup of coffee I've had in a long time. But it is now half past eight like I said and it's time to start doing some reading. So I am prepped with a few books from the Rory Gilmore reading list and I'm actually planning to go and pick up some more tomorrow but to get me started this evening, I think I'm actually going to start with something that's a little bit out of my comfort zone and I'm going to read Howl by Allen Ginsberg. This is obviously on the Rory Gilmore reading list and it is super, super short. So I feel like it's going to be a nice one to sort of jump into the readathon and sort of get started really, really quickly because it's not going to take me long to read at all. But I really, really think that it's going to be an interesting one because it's been a long time since I've read any poetry. And this is actually not the only piece of poetry that I'm going to be reading over the next 24 hours, but this is what I'm going to start with. So without further ado, I'm going to have a little bit more coffee and get started on some reading. So it's just after nine and I just finished up reading Howl. Short but not sweet is how I would describe this one. It was a short but very intense piece of poetry and one that kind of left me as you could probably tell from my face when I just finished it and started googling, a bit confused. I 
feel like I often leave poetry being like, what? Because I just feel like it goes over my head sometimes. I think, emphasis on think, because I'm not claiming to be a poetry expert here. But I think partially this is a poem about his contemporaries and all of the things that they kind of go through together. And the first line of the poem is, I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness. And I feel like that's kind of an overriding theme throughout the rest of the poem. It's split into three sections. The first section really deals with that theme of his contemporaries and a lot of the like obscene and shocking things that they go through and hardships and mental illness and all of that kind of stuff. The second part I really don't really know what that was about and I definitely need to do some more research and then the third part kind of wrapped it up but I'd say of the three parts the one that I enjoyed and connected most with was the first one which is the longest one and like I said is the one that's I think the easiest to decipher but I've done it it's one that I'll probably return to and try and you know get a little bit more from and to do a little bit more research on but I definitely I'm glad that I've read it and it's a nice start to my readathon because I'm now finished with my first book and um, book um, and it's been like half an hour. So next book is actually going to be a book not a poem this time and I'm going to be picking up Mrs Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. First of all can we just appreciate this book cover? It is one of the vintage classics and the like outside cover is this gorgeous painting and then the inside pages also have like a little painting-y design and it's a collection of Virginia Woolf's. I also have a similar collection of Jane Austen's where basically like the outside cover has one painting then the inside cover is another painting and that illustration is the outside cover of another book in the series if that makes sense. So the inside cover of Mrs Dalloway is the outside cover of the the years I think not sure but yeah that's essentially how they work and I think they're really cute so without further ado I'm gonna get started on Mrs Dalloway <laughs> So it's been about an hour, it's now quarter past ten and I've made very little progress with Mrs Dalloway. I'm on page 21. I'm genuinely struggling to get into this one. The text is quite small and I'm not entirely sure what's going on. It's very mundane there's a chance that it might like pick up I guess but it's not really gripping me and is probably not the right kind of thing to be reading when it's pretty much bedtime or like normal non-readathon day bedtime and I don't want to fall asleep so I'm actually going to pop this one to one side for now and return to it in the morning when I'm well rested and it's light outside and I'm actually going to get back on with some poetry funnily enough. I also have this little book of um, Edgar Allan Poe's poems and I'm going to be picking up The Raven which I think is one of the most iconic literary references in Gilmore Girls because there's like a whole episode about all of the Poe's and the Poe society that comes to Stars Hollow to do their performances. So I'm going to get started on The Raven which if I can find it in here. It's definitely in here. Oh yeah. It's only about 10 pages long, so another nice and quick, easy one to tick off, and I'll let you know what I think of it. Okay, so I just finished up reading The Raven, and I really, really enjoyed this one. 
I will do a dramatic reading and a little bit more of an in-depth conversation about my thoughts on it in the morning but for now it is actually about half past 11 in the evening which is why I'm talking at a ridiculous whispering volume because Jay and I are awake but everyone else in the house is still asleep so I will do that dramatic reading which I'm sure you're all very excited about in the morning but for now the next book that I'm going to be picking up is Oryx and Craig by Margaret Atwood. This is going to be the first non-Handmaid's Tale related Margaret Atwood that I've ever read. I've obviously read The Handmaid's Tale and then also the sequel to The Handmaid's Tale which was The Testaments that came out last year and I've been meaning to read this one for a really long time and the fact that it is on this reading list seems like the perfect opportunity to finally delve into it. So I'm going to do a little bit more reading now until I get too tired and then I'm probably going to get to sleep, set an early alarm and and then start reading again in the morning. Good morning guys, it's now about quarter to nine on Saturday morning which means I've got basically 12 hours left to do as much reading as possible and I definitely feel like I've got a lot of catching up to do. I'm not too concerned because literally every time I do a 24 hour readathon, the evening of the readathon when I first get started is always when I do the least amount of reading because I'm just not a night owl and I always end up falling asleep really, really early. So I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to get a lot more reading done the rest of this morning and throughout the afternoon as well. But as promised last night, I do have a dramatic reading of The Raven to share with you all. So, without further ado, I'm just going to share a small snippet of this poem, which I personally really enjoyed. Once upon a midnight dreary, whilst I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor,' I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. "'Only this and nothing more.'" I just absolutely love it. I think it's so evocative and just feels suddenly so encapsulating. It's such a short poem. It's only like less than 10 pages and obviously these are really small pages. So in a larger book, it would probably be only like four or five pages long. And it just really pulls you in. It feels very cool and wintry and fills you with a kind of like creepy undertone and it just is really really great. I also had a favourite quote from it which was Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is I was napping and so gently you came rapping and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that scarce I was sure I heard you, here I opened wide the door darkness there and nothing more. I just love that like, is it refrain in poetry where you have something that comes up again and again and it just feels so creepy and it just pulls you in and it just is great. So I really really enjoyed that one. It's obviously set in this guy's like chamber and study as he's working and then there's this like creepy visitor and it turns out to be this raven and it just is it conjures up such a clear image of what the poem is trying to say, which is something that I don't necessarily always find with poetry. I think sometimes, for example, with Howl, you have these poems that are a little bit more suggestive and not necessarily really telling a super clear story. Whereas with The Raven, I did feel like it was just a clearer narrative that was just told in poetry format and I really enjoyed it. 
oh my god we have this cat in the garden that just keeps coming it's not one of our cats but it keeps like sneaking around i'm not sure if you can see it it's like over here and we've named him oscar he keeps coming over and stealing our cat's food but I kind of want to adopt him. He doesn't have a collar, so I'm not sure if he has a home, but he's certainly not like a skinny stray, so I just can't tell whether he's just making the most of extra food because he's so cute. Oh look, there goes Jay's mum giving him some food. <laughs> Probably why he keeps coming back. Apologies for the interlude, but that cat is just so cute, I had to share, I absolutely love him. So, um, Back to reading, I do feel like I've got a lot of catching up to do, but I am now 100 pages into Oryx and Crake. I am loving this, it is so interesting. I had no idea what this was gonna be about going in. The title is obviously quite elusive, it doesn't really give you much information, and then the cover of these two rabbits, I just didn't really know what to expect, and like I said, I've only ever read Handmaid's Tale related things from Margaret Atwood, so this was a completely new experience. But essentially, like The Handmaid's Tale, this is a kind of post-apocalyptic, environmental disaster related dystopian. And it also has that same narrative style as The Handmaid's Tale, where we have like a present day narrative, which is kind of post-environmental crisis. And then we have flashbacks to what society was like before, kind of leading you in. But unlike The Handmaid's Tale, which is a lot more clarity in terms of like characterization the characters in this book are slightly strange and just feel like weird basically they feel a little bit weird so we have our main character snowman and he is basically living kind of on his own living on like a metal bed frame kind of gives off some like samuel beckett vibes if you've read any of his plays um and then we also have his flashbacks where before he was snowman he was a child called jimmy who lived with a father who was part of like um basically like the scientific creation of using animals like pigs in order to create like organs to be used for humans and there's a lot of like focus on immortality and preserving humanity and then his mum who was also a scientist but kind of didn't really agree with what was going on so there's a lot of different layers to this dystopian and it's really really interesting and then he has a friend called Crake who kind of I'm assuming is going to be quite a key part of it but isn't just yet so I'm very interested by this and looking forward to seeing what happens with the rest of it. I didn't get that much read last night before I fell asleep, but I read about 80 pages of it this morning and I'm absolutely loving it. So Jay and I are actually just about to head out to town where I'm going to be going book shopping, of course, because I'm being Rory for the day and Rory loves a good bookshop. But I wanted to pick up a couple of other books from the reading list so that I've got a few more options for later on this afternoon when I need to read some more books. So I'm pretty much ready to go to town and I thought I'd show you my Rory Gilmore-esque outfit. I've gone for like a Rory in Yale style outfit. So we've got, you know, stripy top, long sleeve, cute skirt, carrying my book and my hot drink. Lorelei might need coffee and an IV, but I personally need oat milk and chai lattes in a chai, chai bean. <laughs>
successfully made it to page 216, which is exactly halfway through this book. And I'm really enjoying it, but also it's a lot to take in. This book is actually a lot more intense than I expected. It's quite strange because like I said, it's a dual timeline narrative. We have this present tense narrative, which is all about this post-apocalyptic world. And that feels, like I said, very Samuel Beckett-esque and just very bizarre. It feels odd and just kind of absurd and you feel a little bit confused about what's going on and how the world came to be this way because it's just very very strange and then we have these past timelines where we're sort of getting an insight into what happened leading up to the world and this apocalyptic environmental crisis and those parts are where it's really intense and there are actually some really disturbing and quite full-on discussions about things like human and child trafficking and sort of desensitization to those topics and they're very impactful discussions but really really hard to read about because they're a bit like graphic and just very full-on and the first one which came up not long after I just sat down to start reading here so maybe about page 120 just seemed to come out of nowhere and it was very very full-on but certainly an interesting discussion to have um, and then yeah so I'm kind of like torn between like the past timeline is a lot easier to get into because the discussions are really intense but they're sort of familiar in the sense that it is a recognizable world and they're discussing things that are sort of commonplace in our world and things that we see being discussed on the news and on social media and those types of things whereas this futuristic apocalyptic timeline is a little bit more removed because it just feels very very bizarre so like I said I'm halfway through and I'm definitely going to be continuing on with this one very very soon but I'm going to take a small break to make some lunch well, brunch, I haven't actually had anything to eat yet today because I've been too busy reading, but I'm gonna make myself a nice brunch. Before I do that though, I thought I'd talk you through the books that I picked up from Waterstones. Three of them are from the Rory Gilmore reading list and one is not. So I'll start with the one that's not, and that is If It Bleeds by Stephen King, which is, I believe, a new Stephen King book. It was released, yeah, in 2020. So haven't I actually heard anyone talking about this one, but it is new and it features the same detective that is in The Outsider, which is another recent book by Stephen King. And I really liked that one. So I'm gonna be reading this one probably in October for a Stephen King readathon that I'll be doing. But I picked this one up because it had three pounds off today. So I thought that was a good deal. And then the three that I picked up from the Rory Gilmore reading list. Funnily enough, I went in with three that I wanted and they all happened to be from the same collection. So first up we have The Crucible by Arthur Miller, which is a nice short play, only like 120 pages long, which is nice for a readathon. We also have the Lottery and Other Stories by Shirley Jackson. This is another short one. Oh, not quite a short actually. This one's 300 pages, but it is a collection of some short stories and I do really like Shirley Jackson. And then finally we have On the Road by Jack Kerouac. This is a, probably the longest one I've got here. It's 300 pages, but quite small text. Um, but having read Howl yesterday, that kind of ignited my desire to read more from the beat generation and I kind of wanted to give this one a try. So those are all the books that I picked up. I'm obviously going to be continuing on with this one first, but for now it's brunch time. One of the challenges that Carolyn and I came up with for our little bingo board was to make a Luke's Diner inspired meal. So I'm going to be making myself some chocolate chip pancakes and having them with a cup of coffee. And I think I'm also going to tick off another thing from the bingo board because I don't think I'm going to read whilst I'm eating and instead I'm going to put on an episode of Gilmore Girls. I actually started the series from scratch yesterday and I watched the first two episodes. So today I'm going to be watching episode three along with my pancakes.
whoa it's currently about 2 30 in the afternoon and the mid-afternoon energy crash is real i'm currently 300 pages into oryx and crick so i've got just over 100 pages left to go but i feel like my attention is kind of waning just because i feel like i've been reading this book forever and although i'm really enjoying it i think paired with the fact that I've read quite a lot of it in a short amount of time and the fact that I'm tired I feel like I'm not really taking it in as much as I'd like to so I'm going to try and switch it up a little bit I'm going to leave this book to one side for maybe like an hour and I'm going to pick up The Crucible instead because like I said this is really really short it's a play and I think it should be quite quick and easy to read so I'm going to pick this one up and see how I get along with this and in another effort to try and wake myself up I'm going to try and tick off another one of the prompts on our bingo board and that is to go and read under a study tree or a reading tree like Rory does at Yale we have a tree in the garden which also has a like um tree swing that's the word a tree swing hanging down from it so I'm going to go and read out there for a little bit it's kind of a very cold day and it looks a little bit rainy so I'm not sure how long I'll stay outside for but I think that should definitely do the trick in terms of warming me up a little bit no waking me up a little bit can you tell I'm tired I can't even speak that should definitely do the trick in terms of waking me up a little bit then I'll come inside see how far I've got along with this and decide whether I'll be continuing on with this one or picking back up with oryx and crate but the plan is to finish them both today so it's just about which one i want to read when but let's go outside when we wake hear the birds and see the sun side by side our fears are done all the good times just begun oh we know what we have let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy but things are finally right With you and I the future is bright Well, I think that might have been the shortest ever outdoor reading experience that I've ever had because I basically sat down under that tree, picked up the crucible and then it started raining. So I managed to read a few pages outside but then the pages started getting wet and I didn't want to risk ruining the book so I very quickly retreated back inside to the kitchen where it's nice and dry and warm. And I'm now on page 28 of this play and so far I'm really enjoying it. This is a play that I've been wanting to read for a really long time now because it is pretty much the first and most recommended book or play that comes up when you search for anything to do with Salem Witch Trials, which is something that I'm personally really interested in. And this one is obviously so highly recommended that I just feel like I have to read it. It's also super short, which means it's probably gonna be a great pick for this readathon. And in general, I'm so interested by it because it's obviously a play that surrounds the events of the Salem Witch Trials, which obviously took place in the 1600s in Salem, Massachusetts. But it was written in the 1950s, which means that I feel like this play is definitely looking at the Salem Witch Trials and the implication of what happened there, but also using that event as a greater commentary and just a more wider discussion on the way that society can, in the face of adversity, so quickly descend into a culture of witch hunting, both literally, as we see in this play and in the Salem Witch Trials, but also figuratively just in the way that we can really descend into a culture of trying to appoint blame when something bad happens. And of course, it's a really 
really important discussion to have because sometimes appointing blame is really important and sort of holding people accountable for their actions is important but in cases like this we also see that blame can sometimes be appointed in areas where it doesn't really belong and that's really interesting and I think the fact that this is written about an event that took place in the 1600s but was written in the 1950s so it was obviously applicable in society at that time and then has countless other applications in modern society even sort of looking at how things can really descend into sort of like cancel and blame culture on social media. I think this is just a play that has such an interesting discussion on that culture of witch hunting and the times when it maybe isn't necessarily the right thing to do but also that there are certain areas of it that maybe are valuable and I just think it is such an interesting discussion so I'm really excited to carry on reading this one. However, whilst I have ticked off that prompt of making a Luke's Diner inspired meal, I'm feeling like doing some baking, especially because it is raining outside and feels super cozy in here. So I'm going to make a pie in my favourite apple shaped pie dish. I actually was trying to decide earlier between making apple pie or cherry pie, so I put a poll up on my Instagram story asking between those two things what people thought Luke would be most likely to make for the diner and I'll put the results up somewhere on the screen but essentially apple pie was the winner. So I'm going to make that now whilst it's cooking I'm going to do a little bit more reading of the crucible and another one of the prompts on our list is to read whilst listening to some music. Now I've actually found a channel recently which I think is absolutely incredible. Let me see if I can find it. It's called Autumn Cozy and it is essentially a channel which is just full of like ambient sounds and music with autumnal backgrounds. So we have, let's see, Renaissance Autumn Village, Dr. Jekyll Ambience, Victorian Ambience, Cozy Feast Ambience, Rainy Day Coffee Shop, Fortune Teller Caravan, Victorian Office, Cozy Autumn Tree House, and they all have like rain sounds, music, books. It's kind of like soft ASMR, which is something that I don't necessarily listen to very often, but because this one is autumnal, I just think it's so perfect. So this is the selection that I have to choose from. So I think I'm gonna pop on, let's see. Cozy Autumn Tree House, I think. Yeah, let's go for Cozy Autumn Tree House and I'm gonna start baking. Side by side and through and through No limit to what we can do Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right Get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to 
to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life I wanna make it count, honey Come on now and take my hand Hey, darling it's me and you On the road with a couple of tunes In a car for two A cozy afternoon of baking was literally the perfect way to spend my afternoon, I think. But as it turns out, making like a lattice top for a pie takes a lot longer than I expected. So I ended up spending quite a long time in the kitchen and didn't actually get that much reading done. It's now exactly 6 p.m. No, that's a lie. It's exactly 6.30 p.m. which means that we of course have officially two hours left to go of my readathon and I have officially finished up with The Crucible. I feel like I just said officially about five times in that sentence but I just finished up reading The Crucible. It took me slightly longer than I expected because of baking but as anticipated, I really, really enjoyed this one. It was such an interesting play, and I think the fact that it was a play made it feel like a very dramatic and fast-paced narrative. A lot happens in quite a short amount of pages, and it's really, really interesting. It was just nice to be able to finally read something about the Salem Witch Trials. Like I said, it's a topic that I found particularly interesting. But then, just in general, the discussion surrounding witch hunts and the way that people are so desperate to preserve their own sort of outward appearance that they're willing to then make someone else out to be this out like completely terrible witchly and demonic figure in order to just protect themselves and how that obviously escalates and spirals into total just out of control madness where everyone is blaming on each other and it's just wild how quickly these things escalate when in reality I'm sure that everyone kind of knows that it's not witch hunts and that these witches aren't actually real and yet somehow it just managed to escalate in that way and I think it's so interesting because on one hand you have the people who are affording the blame and I think that comes down to fear and self-preservation but then you also have the people who ultimately must know that they are innocent and know that they're not witches and yet for some reason due to the like hysteria surrounding them and the amount of blame being placed in their direction that they accept these charges even though they know it's not true and it's just such an interesting like insight into the human psyche and I don't think this book necessarily addresses why that happens but it certainly gives an interesting insight into a situation where it does happen. So definitely enjoyed this one and obviously this is the first proper full book that I finished because well I guess I finished Hal but that was super super small and again the Raven was really small so this is like the first bigger text that I finished today and weirdly I actually guess this is the first 24 hour readathon where I've not read any full books yet because I finished two poems and now a play. I do only have about 100 pages left of Oryx and Crake so I'm about to go and make some dinner and then spend the next two hours trying to read as much as possible and fingers crossed finish Oryx and Crake before the readathon is over. You know we're gonna have a really good time Driving in the middle of the night when the stars are bright Pack our bags and get in that car Okay, so it is currently 19 minutes past 8 on the evening of Saturday the 29th of August and I just finished up reading Oryx and Crake by Margaret Atwood and because I've only got about 10 minutes left of my Rory Gilmore readathon I think this book is going to bring my readathon to an end so I managed to complete four of the things from the Rory Gilmore reading list and honestly I think this has been the most fun I've ever had doing a 24 hour readathon I love 24 hour readathons in general because they're always such a fun challenge and they definitely push me to read more 
than I normally would on any given 24 hour period. But this one in particular has been so incredible. First of all, it was just really nice to be able to organize this with Carolyn, who like I've already mentioned, is one of my closest friends. And it's just been so nice for us to be able to share this love of Gilmore Girls and reading. But what has made this 24 hour readathon even more incredibly special has been all of you that have joined in. I've been so happy and overwhelmed to see so many of you actually participating with Carolyn and I and sharing your progress on Instagram stories and keeping us updated with which books you're reading and which challenges you are doing and honestly it has just been such a fun thing to see and it's just made the readathon such a fun experience so if you did share any of your reading updates and challenges and Gilmore Girls related pictures and content with me on Instagram throughout the day for this readathon I just wanted to say a big big thank you because that made this readathon just so special and so much more fun and I think I can probably speak for both Carolyn and I when I say that we're definitely going to be doing this again because it's just been such a lovely experience and let's be real the reading list is huge so we can probably afford to do this readathon countless amounts of time before we all actually get through the full list. However, whilst this has been the most fun I've ever had doing a 24 hour readathon, I'd also say it's probably the least I've actually ever managed to read. I ended up doing a lot more Gilmore Girlsy and bookish related things that weren't quite reading and didn't spend quite as much time with my head in the books today. But I really don't mind because this for me was just all about having a fun, stars hollowy, magical Gilmore's girlsy day and that's exactly what I did. So even though I didn't get quite as much reading done as I'd maybe initially planned to, I just had the best time. But just to quickly wrap up my thoughts on all of these books, I obviously started out with Hal by Allen Ginsberg and I enjoyed this one but it was slightly confusing and maybe just a bit too surreal and abstract of a poem for my personal preference and so I ended up giving this one three stars. I then read The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe which was a little bit more up my street in terms of poetry. I really liked it and I gave it four stars. I then read The Crucible by Arthur Miller, which was so interesting and I definitely want to do more research into the Salem Witch Trials and find more books on this topic and maybe just more books in general that delve into this discussion about sort of witch hunts and how society can really sort of get behind them which is just so interesting like I've already discussed and I gave that one four stars can't remember if I just said that and then finally we had Oryx and Crake which was an incredible Margaret Atwood her writing is just impeccable and I think what was really interesting was that I was reading this one knowing that I'd only ever read Handmaid's Tale related books so The Handmaid's Tale and The Testaments. I was hoping I was really going to enjoy this one and it certainly did not disappoint because it was so interesting it dealt with a lot of the same topics as The Handmaid's Tale. Both are dystopians, both have two timelines showing you a present day post-apocalyptic type dystopian society and then we also have those flashbacks showing how society got to that point and kind of what created the disaster that led to this introduction of a dystopian society. And so they both deal a lot with the concept of environmental crisis, with managing the population, with crises surrounding population either under or overpopulation and all of those types of things and so they deal with a lot of the same topics and yet this one was just so unique in the way that it dealt with that subject and so whilst I can see that Margaret Atwood has some very clear themes that run through all of her books and topics that she's really clearly very passionate about talking about she also manages to show a variety of different ways to explore and discuss these issues and I think books which deal with the concept of environmentalism and the way that population can be obviously really really detrimental is extremely interesting and um, because it's an issue that's becoming ever present and ever more important in society as population continues to grow and the environmental crisis gets worse and so it's really interesting to read about and I'd highly recommend this one especially for anyone who is a fan of The Handmaid's Tale but just hasn't had a chance to read anything else by Margaret Atwood yet because I really really enjoyed it and this one was my only five-star read for this readathon so I really loved it and those 
collection of works in total brought me to having read 600 pages over the last 24 hours and also this was my most um, varied TBR for a 24 hour readathon because I typically just go for books whereas here we have a prose novel, we have a play and two pieces of poetry so it was really fun to explore all of those different narrative styles which I don't necessarily pick up all that often. So, without further ado, today was all about reading, but also about our bingo board of challenges. So I just wanted to try and quickly check how many of them I actually managed to complete. So first of all, we have a read under a study tree or a reading tree. I managed to do that, although only for a few minutes before it started raining. Make a Luke Steiner inspired meal. Tick. I made my apple pie and also my pancakes. Read a cozy book. Hmm. I'm going to go with, for my cosy book, The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe because I feel like it felt so wintry and creepy that it felt really nice to read whilst inside with a candle on last night and I absolutely loved that, so that was a cosy book. I read whilst listening to some music this afternoon whilst I was baking and I of course watched several episodes of Gilmore Girls whilst taking a couple of reading breaks. Drank plenty of hot drinks, starting out with some coffee, then including some tea, some more coffee, some chai and then that interesting apple cinnamon syrup thing that I made earlier on. I read four things from the Rory Gilmore reading list. I did read more than three things, more than three books, any length. There definitely were some short ones, but more than three books. And read a classic, and I think all of these books count as classics, and certainly The Crucible and Edgar Allan Poe are like proper classics, I think, but I'm gonna count these all. So, success! I had an incredible day, ticked off all nine challenges from the bingo board, and just had such a fun time sharing this experience with all of you. Like I said, I've loved hearing about all of your progress on Instagram, but if any of you have also filmed a vlog like Carolyn and I, I'd love for you to let me know in the comments down below because I cannot wait to check it out and see your full Gilmore Girls inspired day. Once again, Carolyn's channel and her vlog will be linked down below, so definitely go and check her out. But for now, I think I'm going to go and reward myself with a good old slice of my apple pie and an episode of Gilmore Girls. So thank you so, so much for watching, and I, for one, cannot wait for the next Rory Gilmore 24-hour readathon. See you next time!